What the new laws do is to redress the balance. They have repaired the award safety net, so you can't bargain your award entitlements away without compensation. They've restored unfair dismissal protection, at least to most workers. Uh, they've introduced new national employment standards um, that provide a broader range of protections for a broader group of workers. There has been a winding back of the deep anti-union principles inscribed in the, the law and instead we have far greater balance. The key things are for, for vulnerable workers, the national employment standards, far more comprehensive. Once again, I think the content of them could be beat, beefed up, but at least there's a wider range of issues covered in them. The awards are back in there uh, and, and alive and, and vibrant, which is important. Um, but most importantly of all is the right to multi-employer bargaining for low-wage workers. There are still aspects of the new legislation that unions won't be and shouldn't be happy about. We still have some of the most restrictive laws on industrial action in the developed world. Uh, and patent bargaining, which is so common in other countries um, and which is perfectly consistent with international labour standards, continues to be prohibited here uh, in a way that we just don't see elsewhere. The really big thing if we're thinking about labour law reform is how do we allow unions the capability of engaging with the big issues of the day and until we get rid of this matters pertaining issue and the constraints on the commission to arbitrate around these matters, we'll always find the movement boxed into a very narrow set of issues. Under work choices, I had no protection from unfair dismissal. Has this changed under the new laws? The well, big change under the new Fair Work Act is that if you're working for an employer that's got less than 100 employees, you will be able to bring an unfair dismissal claim. That's what was taken away by the work choices legislation. Uh, but there are some qualifications. You have to have worked for your employer for at least six months, or if it's a small employer, for at least 12 months. And there are still some special rules uh, that apply if you're made redundant. So uh, if your boss lets you go because uh, they don't have any work for you to do, then you may not be able to bring an unfair dismissal claim. What happens if there's a dispute or problem? Where can my union go to get it sorted? There's Fair Work Australia and that's a body that'll have um, significantly greater powers of dispute resolution than the Industrial Relations Commission has right now. Um, and that'll include pretty broad powers to deal with disputes concerning the new national employment standards, as well as disputes arising under awards or enterprise agreements, unless your unions decided to um, uh, have someone else look after those issues. Will my union rep be able to come to my workplace and help me out with problems and advice? Under the new laws, there's a general right for union officials, if they've got a permit, to enter workplaces for discussions with members or potential members. And one of the changes here is that it won't now be possible in most cases for an employer to lock a union out. Uh, so that will improve the access of unions to workplaces. There's also a new set of general protections against wrongful or discriminatory treatment at work. Uh, and that will play an important part in making it much riskier for an employer to pressure their workers not to talk to a union um, or misrepresenting to their workers what dealing with a union might involve. How do the good faith bargaining laws work? Will it make it easier to negotiate with the boss? If a majority of employees in a workplace want to negotiate an agreement, uh, their boss won't be able to say no. Um, once you are bargaining, the new good faith bargaining obligations uh, are a set of ground rules that both sides have to follow. So you have to turn up to meetings, you have to give genuine consideration to each other's proposals, can't do anything which would undermine the bargaining process. So it's setting up a more level playing field for collective bargaining to occur. There are quite a lot of sectors where um, collective bargaining hasn't been particularly common. One of Fair Work Australia's responsibilities under the new legislation is to try and facilitate that kind of bargaining. Um, and there are particular rules for uh, unions bargaining with a number of different employers uh, in a low paid sector. And in particular, if, um, if the union finds it difficult to reach agreement, uh, it can ask Fair Work Australia to arbitrate um, that dispute uh, and put in place um, a settlement that will apply uh, potentially right across an industry. Where unions are strong or getting stronger, 
I think they will be able to use the rules to good effect and you'll see that in parts of the blue collar heartlands but you'll also see it I think uh, especially in parts of the public sector where unions are getting stronger but where unions aren't we could all then employers will basically be able, be able to do what they've always been able to do which is get away with what the minimum is that it's required so I suspect the rules will work best where there's strong union presence.